Tonight, I want to start with Donald Trump. Now, you probably know him as the guy from all those pizza commercials. Go big or go home. The big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. $9.99. They've got to be losing money on this. And it's a deal? Yes, we eat our pizza the wrong way. Crust first. Here's the deal. You give me those three pizzas, only I'll give you just $5 a piece. I'll be honest. All right, 10 years ago, if you told me that one of these fast food pitchmen was gonna be president, <laughs> and one of them was gonna be a pedophile, <laughs> I would have guessed wrong a lot of times. <laughs> now, for the last few weeks, Trump's impeachment has been dominating the news. And while that's important, it's also dangerous. Because anytime we focus too much on one Trump scandal, we lose track of all the others. Trump is kind of like an evil magician playing three-card Monty with all of us, right? <laughs> He's like, here we go, find the Ukraine scandal. Here we go, here we go, here we go. You're like, all right, middle one, there we go. Ah! <laughs> That's just when I thought about nuking a hurricane, you idiot. Come on, Ukraine scandal, here we go, double or nothing. You're like, oh, okay, middle one again, yeah? Ah, no, nah, that's just me parting with Epstein, you dumb fuck. Sadly enough, one of the cards we haven't flipped over is the crisis that's happening right now at the southern border. A growing humanitarian crisis along the U.S. border with Mexico. Thousands of desperate asylum seekers are living in deplorable conditions. More than 55,000 people are now scattered in camps all throughout the U.S.-Mexico border. You have no access to work. You have no access to education. You have very little access to medical services if children are sick. The suffering is everywhere. Today, one of the biggest problems there were only a handful of bathrooms for the more than 2,000 migrants who call this camp home. Over 55,000 migrants are living in absolute squalor along the U.S.-Mexico border right now. This whole situation actually came out of the frenzy over the migrant caravan. Do you guys remember the migrant caravan? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever happened to the caravan? Like, right before the midterms, Trump would not shut up about it. He's like, oh, the brown walkers are coming to rape and pillage America. <laughs> Do you know what actually happened? A few thousand people showed up and asked for asylum. That's it, a few thousand. That's how many people came to my wedding in Sacramento. <laughs> that's small, okay? For Indian people, that's nothing. <laughs> but Trump used that media frenzy as rationale to issue a policy called MPP, also known as Remain in Mexico. It means that people who come to America seeking asylum now need to remain in Mexico while the U.S. processes their case. Now, you might be wondering, why on earth would anyone in their right mind travel that far and put their family through that much danger? This is why. Yesenia Ramirez says she and her family fled El Salvador. A gang demanded money, and when they couldn't pay, they asked for her eldest daughter. What you see in Guatemala is extortionists, rapists, thieves. The government does nothing to stop them. I am fleeing because they want to kill me. How can I return to my country when my life is at risk there? These people don't want to claim asylum. They're forced to claim asylum. Their sons are being recruited by gangs. Their daughters are being forced into prostitution. They're living in such extreme danger, they have to evacuate. Asylum is a last resort, and by making them wait in Mexico, we're actually putting them back in the same danger they were running from. More than 340 public reports of rape, kidnap, and other violent attacks against asylum seekers who returned under this policy. For some, life is worse here than in their home country of Guatemala. They don't want their faces seen because they say they were recently kidnapped and extorted by suspected cartels while living in Mexico. One man was kidnapped five hours after the U.S. sent him back to Mexico. Five hours. Now, Trump's got to be conflicted about this because on one hand, he's like, the drug cartels are bad hombres. But on the other hand, <laughs> they're really good at rounding up Mexicans. <laughs> and they're like, sir, they're actually Guatemalans. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I know, Mexicans. Now, the good news is the ACLU is challenging Remain in Mexico in court right now as we speak. But the bad news is it's just one part of a much larger war on asylum. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. Since the moment Trump got into office, his administration has been working to dismantle the asylum system, which is U.S. law, by the way. Asylum is a legal right designed to help the world's most desperate people. Every developed country in the world has this, so we're not that special. But gutting asylum 
might be the cruelest thing Donald Trump has done as president, especially when you think about why the United States has an asylum system to begin with. So after World War II, America saw a massive influx of asylum seekers from across Europe. We accepted thousands of Jews and displaced people from countries like Poland, Ukraine, Estonia, and we could have turned them away. In fact, a lot of Americans wanted to. But in 1947, President Harry Truman told Congress, victims of war and oppression look hopefully to the democratic countries to help them rebuild their lives. The only civilized course is to enable these people to take new roots in friendly soil. Now, that's a beautiful message. But now we have this guy. Asylum is being scammed, the whole asylum system. It's a big, fat con job, folks. Everybody is abusing it. Totally bogus claims. It's a hoax. I know about hoaxes. I just went through a hoax. <laughs> He's talking about the Mueller report, but he could be talking about anything. <laughs> He's like, Mueller report, hoax. Ukraine, hoax. And I'm talking about the country. It doesn't exist. Total hoax, folks. <laughs> there is no evidence of widespread scamming of the asylum system. Of all the ways to immigrate to America, asylum is one of the hardest systems to go through. It is very rigorous. First, asylum seekers make the journey without help. They show up at America's door. They prove their life is in danger and hope we take them in. Now, there's actually another way into America if you're incredibly desperate, but nobody's talking about this. You have to host a late night comedy show. <laughs> Look at this. All of these guys are immigrants. <laughs> Somehow, I'm one of the only hosts that's born in America? Dude, half of our Jimmies aren't even from America, and the president isn't doing anything about it. We gotta ban them. <laughs> that's not the funny part. Look, the thing I wanted to figure out was this. What is Trump's strategy when it comes to attacking asylum? So I sat down with someone who knows a lot about immigration law. My name is Lee Gallant, and I'm a lawyer at the American Civil Liberties Union, and I spend my days trying to protect the rights of asylum seekers who are under attack. How is the Trump administration's attack of asylum unique? That's a great question. We are dealing now with an administration that wants to end asylum, period. I mean, fundamental changes to our system in any other year, each one of these changes would be the biggest case we worked on. But now there are two, three each month. How many times have you sued Trump since we started this interview? Hopefully our, my team is not slacking off while I'm here. You're talking about Will Chamberlain numbers, 100. We are, and, and it's not slowing down. I mean, every week we are planning another lawsuit because every week they're doing something horrific. One lawsuit every week. Do you know the toll that would take on a person? Look at Lee. <laughs> He's 24 years old, you guys. <laughs> he needs to sleep. Basically, what he's saying is that Trump is doing everything he can to make it as hard as possible for migrants to even get to the door. That way they get scared away, or maybe they die trying to get here. Take metering. It's a policy that puts a daily limit on the number of people who can claim asylum. So at the border between Tijuana and San Diego, asylum agents generally processed 100 asylum seekers a day. But after Homeland Security put metering into effect, those agents were only allowed to process 20 a day. And now the wait list to even apply for asylum has ballooned to 11,000. That is the highest it's ever been at that location. So if you're fleeing cartel violence, it now takes as long as nine months just to start the process of claiming asylum. Imagine trying to call 911 and they said, hey, wait, 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 you need to wait seven to nine months <laughs> before even dialing. You'd be like, grandma needs an ambulance. <laughs> and they'd be like, grandma needs to be patient. <laughs> now, there's also the issue of finding legal aid. Asylum seekers who find lawyers are five times more likely to be granted asylum than those without lawyers, which is why Trump wants them stuck in Mexico. One study found that immigrants in America were able to find lawyers 22.7% of the time, and those in Mexico, only 1.2% of the time. That number is so small, Bernie Sanders <laughs> accused it of destroying the middle class. <laughs> I was like, you gotta hit it with a thing. <laughs> now remember, these are all tactical decisions that Trump has made to make asylum a nightmare. But let's say you tough it out. You wait through metering to start the asylum process. Then you wait in Mexico in one of those awful camps till your case is heard. 
Say you miraculously don't get killed or robbed or raped or kidnapped. What happens next? You have to pass the biggest interview of your life. The interview to establish that you have a credible fear of persecution, that's what makes you eligible for asylum. And it is a high bar to clear, especially when the guy in charge doesn't believe anyone's story is credible. It's ridiculous. You have people coming in claiming asylum. They're all reading exactly what the lawyer gives them. They read a, a little page given by lawyers, and they say, say the following phrase. I am very afraid for my life. I am afraid for my life. OK. And then I look at the guy. He looks like he just got out of the ring. He's the heavyweight champion of the world. He's afraid for his life. How does he do that? How is he racist but also complimentary? <laughs> He's like, these asylum seekers, they're liars, they're cheaters, they're killers, but they're so strong. Look at their bodies. <laughs> I can't stop staring at their abs. Now, Trump is also redefining what counts as credible fear so even fewer people qualify. Last year, the Trump administration issued a policy saying that gang violence and domestic abuse wouldn't count as credible fears, because according to them, those are just private violence, which is a horrible term for domestic abuse and an even worse G.I. Joe character. <laughs> Look, private violence was a war criminal, you guys. <laughs> Thankfully, a federal judge overturned part of that rule, but in the six months it was in place, it did real damage. Asylum acceptance rates from the Northern Triangle tanked. Look at this graph. This graph reminds me of when we all saw the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer. <laughs> and that dip right there, that's the exact moment we saw that Sonic had human teeth. <laughs> Remember, we were like, why the fuck does he have molars? <laughs> now, look, here's an important thing to remember. All of this messing with credible fear goes against established US law. It's called a credible fear because Congress said, you're not gonna have time to understand US law, but you're just gonna explain to an asylum officer, this is why I've come to the United States. This is why I fear going back to my country. And if you're credible, you would move to the next stage. Okay, so I'm gonna list some fears. You tell me if it's credible or not credible. <laughs> Gang violence. In our view, credible, not to the administration. But I wanna be clear about this. You have to actually be factually credible. People think you can just assert it. No, you have to have specifics and tell your story, and it has to be clear what's happened. Religious persecution. Credible. A swarm of bees. <laughs> Not credible. What if the bees are running drugs and you testified against them? Not credible. Torture. Credible. Jellyfish. No. They're everywhere now because of global warming. That's not a credible fear? No. How about this one? A bus rig to explode if it goes under 50 miles an hour. No, I think it depends on who rigs it, but that was a good movie. I'm honestly surprised he saw speed. A lot of millennials haven't. So all these moves, right? Discrediting asylum seekers, metering, MPP, redefining credible fear, have seriously hurt people who need asylum. But they all pale in comparison to the cruelest policy, the transit rule. The Trump administration opened a new front in its drive to limit the number of people crossing the southern border. A massive rewriting of U.S. asylum law. This rule introduced this morning would effectively end asylum protections for migrants coming up from Central America seeking asylum in the U.S. Trump wants to end these protections, and it makes sense. He hates protection. That's why Eric was born. <laughs> Now, the transit rule went into effect in September, and it requires anyone applying for asylum on the southern border to first apply and then get rejected somewhere else. And I know that sounds reasonable, but it is insane. Here's why. So say you live in Honduras and you're a mom with two kids. Gangs are coming to your door demanding more money than you even have, or they threaten they will take your daughters. The local cops are no use, so you're desperate as any parent would be. So you head north to Guatemala. But it's also dangerous there. You got the same gang problem, you got the same threats. So you go up to Mexico, same problem again. Finally, you get to the United States where it's a safe place and your kids are only endangered by high fructose corn syrup. You'll live with that. <laughs> but America turns you away. They're like, we won't let you apply here because you didn't apply anywhere else first. But of course you didn't. Those other countries aren't safe. That's why this whole thing is cruel. And as far as Lee is concerned, 
this is what will happen. It will effectively end asylum at our southern border. And this is what the administration says. If you genuinely were fearful, you'd apply for asylum the first place you got to. But why don't they just apply for asylum in Mexico? Because it would take months to get through that process. And when they're waiting, they will be in too much danger. It sounds to me like the administration knows the way they can manipulate or tweak the rules legally to make it virtually impossible for you to get into the country. What is the administration hoping will happen? What they are hoping is that you give up. And many people are giving up because it's just simply far too dangerous to wait there. It's crazy. The Trump administration basically wants to replace the Statue of Liberty with Bowser. <laughs> now, the good news is the transit rule is probably illegal. But the bad news is even if the courts throw it out, Trump is working to make it live on through something called safe third country agreements, which he has signed with Honduras. El Salvador and Guatemala. They say that these countries are safe enough for the U.S. to deport asylum seekers there. But as we know, none of these countries are safe at all. Take El Salvador. In El Salvador these days, a pretty small country, only six million people, it doesn't take long when you're you know, going out at night to stumble upon a scene like this with a body laying dead in the streets. And that's, that's pretty much what people here are living with. Vice reporters are so cool. <laughs> Like, they always look like they just walked out of a Weezer concert. And it's like, hey, man, I was just trying to get merch, uh, but now I'm in a war zone. Uh, live from El Salvador, it's Jonas. <laughs> By the way, there's another reason why these countries are no place to apply for asylum. Is Guatemala capable of handling asylum seekers? Guatemala has said repeatedly, and every expert has said repeatedly, they cannot handle thousands of cases. There's just simply no way. Why not? They just don't have the infrastructure. They only have a few asylum officers. How many asylum officers do they have? Our understanding is that they only have a few, less than five. Lee was dead on. Guatemala's asylum department has four employees. There are more people in this room named Raj <laughs> than their entire asylum department. I'm right here, Raj. Again, Raj, Raj, Raj. Raj, that's five Rajas right there. I know, you're like, my name's Vikram. You get my point. <laughs> now, these countries in the Northern Triangle are objectively dangerous and unable to handle asylees, which puts Trump's cheerleaders in a very bizarre position of arguing that these countries are actually safer and better than America. Watch the gymnastics. If you think it's too dangerous for those children in Guatemala that they should go to America, you better not take them to Detroit. Here's the amazing part. Baltimore's murder rate is double that of Guatemala. If you're fleeing Honduras because you're afraid to live there and you're searching for asylum, you're in Mexico, which is a pretty safe country, I would assume. Mexico had their most violent year in decades. In 2017, oh. more than 26,000 murders. I wouldn't call that a safe country. Tucker hears facts <laughs> like he's watching fireworks. He's like, oh, ah, oh. <laughs> now, look, let's break down his racist long division. It's insane. He's like, all right, first things first. We don't want Guatemalans to come here because they're criminals, right? Which would mean Guatemala is dangerous, which means migrants should flee and come here. Wait, no, no, no. Brown people shouldn't come here. Want to know why? Baltimore is way more <laughs> fucked up, which means Guatemala's actually safe, which means they're not criminals, so they should come here. Wait, stop it, Tucker, back! <laughs> Just think about Benghazi. <laughs> now, I know there are people out there like, come on, Hassan, be fair. You're not even showing Tucker's POV. And you're right. <laughs> we should show Tucker's point of view. People on the other side of this issue really have some pretty forceful things to say about asylum. So to make it a little bit more realistic, I just want to role play as Tucker Carlson. Let's do it. Okay. Just give me the bow tie. I'm just gonna play it real. Here we go. It's nice. I'm here with Lee Gellert. Lee, refugees are creating a crisis at the border, aren't they? 
No. They're, the numbers are not even historically high. There is no crisis at the border. There's a crisis in the Northern Triangle, and we should be trying to help. So you don't think there's a crisis with these migrants defrauding the system? So you're pro-fraud? Uh, I am not pro-fraud, but I don't think that we're seeing fraud at, at the border. It's a false narrative. How do you know it's a false narrative? Because we are out there with these people. We you're out there with the Guatemalans? We are absolutely out there. And you're part of some sort of affiliated gang? You're not. Sorry, sir, maybe I'm confused. Obama put lots of kids in cages, but I guess it was OK because he was cool? We opposed what President Obama did, and he ended it very quickly. What this administration's doing is a sustained attack on children and families that's been going on two and a half years. Thank you, Lee. We're out of time. <laughs> Yeah, I cut him off. What's he gonna do, sue me? He's a kid, I'm not scared of him. <laughs> now look, I know this seems like the part where I make an impassioned argument for why immigrants are good for America. You know the hits. This country was built on immigrants. They boost the economy. Rihanna, that's all true. <laughs> but that is not why we have asylum. We have asylum because it is the morally right thing to do. These are people escaping murder in kidnappings and gang violence. We could have them wait for their asylum hearings here in the United States where they're safe. Instead, we are willfully sending thousands of migrants back to the wolves. When we look back at this time, we will be ashamed. We're going to ask, how did we let this happen? And if we keep going down Trump's path, there's only gonna be one way to get into this country hosting a late night comedy show. <laughs> and that's just wrong because while America can afford to take in asylum seekers, we cannot afford any more foreign jimmies.